Um, what resonated? What resonated so far from those three pieces? What is the difference between go, growth and buying cash flow? Great question. So uh, let me let me explain. If you go to the bank and you got invested in a CD, if you're familiar with that, CDs in the bank are 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 these deposits where you can say, hey, I'm for every let's say the CD pays five percent. I put hundred dollars down in the CD. They lock it up for six months. That's the that's the liquidity. And for that six months, they pay you five dollars, right? Of the hundred dollars, that's five percent. And at the end of the six months, I just get my hundred dollars back. So I get my principal back, and I get the I get the cash flow along the way. That's buying cash flow. A lot of real estate investments are very centered around buying cash flow. You put a hundred thousand dollars into an apartment building, like that Alex and Leila and I are investing right now. Put a hundred, and then you get cash flow six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent over every year that you're a part of it. And then at the end, they give you $100,000 back because that was the loan they took. What's even better is if that grew, it's even better, but you're buying the cash flow. You're saying, here, take my money, give me cash flow, and then give me my money back. Uh, buying growth is making investment now in Apple. You get no cash flow, and then you hope that Apple goes up. And by the way, if you've not been in Apple for the last 10 years, it's been on a mad tear. Like it's That's all my kids own, so it's pretty cool. Uh, people often don't buy time because of emotional guilt and not practical. 100, Layla's spot on, right? Um, okay, let's talk about that for one second. How do we release this guilt? How many of you ever feel guilty of, you know, hey, I should I should get someone else to wash my car. I should get someone else to clean my house. I should get someone else. Like, how many feel have to feel a little guilt around that? Yeah? Well, do you know how to not feel guilt around that? There's two ways. Way number one, hang out with people that don't feel guilt around that. That's the easiest way, right? Way number two, do it one time. And then you'll feel less guilty the next the next time. Those are the only two ways. I was literally thinking the same thing, Sean. <laughs> this is why I love you, Layla. Yeah, to, like the easiest way. You wanna you wanna eat you wanna eat healthy. You guys know this. You're in the health space. You wanna eat healthy. Hang out with healthy people. Like nobody's ever going to lunch. Nobody's ever going to dinner with Alex and Layla and not getting dessert. You know that. Like you know that, right? So we know that, right? So. Um, Awesome, cool, uh, good, good so far. So so those three frameworks and language, is, is that helpful enough to saying, okay, I can put people in the parking lot, figure out liquidity, ownership and terms, I'll give you the frameworks. It may take you a couple of times to do them once or twice or refer to them, but I'm gonna promise you that once you do it once or twice, it'll become second, it'll become kind of like, you know, uh, instinct. And the more you can do it with instinct, the easier everything will be for you. Because I will tell you right now, everything is an investment. You're you're deciding, should I invest in a cup of coffee or should I not? Should I invest in t time to write this email? Should I not? Should I invest in coming to this call? Should I not? Everything that we do is an investment in a lot of ways. And so the more you can have a framework for thinking about it, the easier it becomes when you actually do it. And I'll just say, just as a piggyback on what Sean said, you know, becoming an investor or thinking through a investor framework, like one of the advantages we have is everybody here is a business owner. And so being an investor has made me a better business owner and being a business owner has made me a better investor. And so they are two very different frames. And I would say the biggest gift of thinking like an investor is expanding your time horizon. And you, if you watch any of my YouTube stuff, I talk about this a lot, but a lot of times in the business world, we're always thinking about this month, next month, this quarter, and we're not really thinking beyond that. But when you think from the investor frame, it's like, is this an opportunity that I want to pursue for the next five years? Do I think I'm going to get outsized returns versus another opportunity that I could allocate my time and energy towards, right, and money? And so it's just, I think it helps having both frames and actually applying both to all your decisions. Your business decisions, put your investor hat on, and your investing decision, put your business hat on. So, just so good. Um, um I will give you one uh, one last uh, idea before we jump into some some discussion points. The time horizon thing that Alex talked about is so on point, and it's a great tiebreaker whether you want to make an investment or not. How many of you at any given time are like, I'm not sure if I should either do this or invest in that. Like, how many of you have ever been come across it at some point? All right, give me a wave. Okay, cool. Here's the easiest way to think about: it. take the time horizon of that investment and extend it out. If the extension of the time horizon still convinces you to do it, do it. Otherwise, don't. So I'll give you an example. Um, let's say I want to invest in my friend's startup and he's like, Hey, it's a three to five year deal. I'm like, okay, if I, if I'm unsure, if I make the three to five year investment, a 15 year investment, it doesn't change the way I think about the startup. So it's not changed my way of thinking about this investment at all. So, so to me, that's a, eh, I can't just extending the time horizon. It actually teaches me that it's actually a lot riskier than I think it's 50, 50. I actually don't want to do that. But if it's Bitcoin, this is just me and my view of the world. Hey, uh, should I invest in Bitcoin today or crypto today? I don't know, right? Should I invest in Bitcoin today or in three years? Maybe in three years, I think Bitcoin will be higher. Do I think Bitcoin will be higher today uh, in 15 years than it is today? I'm going to wager it is. 
So as I extend the time horizon, it gives me a little bit more perspective on whether I should look at some investment more or not. So whenever I'm stuck, I just extend the time horizon to see if I'm thematically making a better investment. Mr. Dunham, uh, should we should we try to uh, do some uh, Q&A or some discussions around topics that people are either thinking about a live investment they're working on. They're like, hey, I haven't made my first one yet. Hey, what should I do first? What should I do second? I'm stuck with this. This would be a, a good forum for us because you have Alex and Layla who've done a lot of great things and, and I can provide some insight as well. This would be a real, really nice, like friendly shark tank for you to get some, get some guidance around stuff. All right, awesome. Let's start with the, let's start with the Q and A then. Let's open the floor up for, for questions. You got Sharon, you got Alex, you got Layla. So let's start off with the questions. Do me a favor and throw your questions in the chat. There you go. We already got one for you, Sharon. Okay. Awesome. Kim says, um, what would be, the, what would be a good first or second investment? So let's assume, that you have your safety trampoline, Kim, is that, let's just assume that, right? So we should we should do the safety trampoline first. I would be ultra committed to doing that. Please, no FOMO that the world's, hey, there's a lot of opportunities right now, et cetera. Like, don't worry about FOMO, take care of you first. Let's invest in your startup first. So I would do safety trampoline first, a baseline of three to six months and whatever makes you feel good, but I would do a baseline first. Uh, the second thing is I would buy time but I would start getting really familiar in buying cash flow because let me tell you why. Um, Alex and Leila and I are working on this investment where we invest in apartment buildings. And we know that if we write a $100,000 check, I'm making up 100,000 because it's an easy number. It has a couple of things. Again, I'm evaluating, says, has that capital preservation? Yes, because I'm investing in an asset. I own something. Uh, in, the, in the investment world, they called it asset backed. Is it asset backed? That means my $100,000 is backed by an asset. So I feel like, you know, that building being there is a good thing. And then people are paying rent to live there. So after expenses, I get a portion of the rent. I would do whatever it takes to get into the mindset of how can I buy income? How can I buy cash flow? There's two ways to do that. One is in private investments that you can do. And I know we can, you know, if you want to reach, reach out to me on Instagram, whatever, and just say, hey, I was on the chat, chat with you. You know, make some recommendations. I'm happy to. That's my gift to you know us being all, all together. But there's also a public market way of doing this. So the one thing I would research if I were you is I would research REITs, R-E-I-T-S, REITs. They're called Real Estate Investment Trusts, REITs. A REIT is required by its charter to distribute 90% of its profits. Think about that for a second, right? So if, if $100 in rents come in and they operate for, you know, uh, $90, that $10, they have to distribute nine out of that 10. And it's publicly traded, which also means that you get immediate liquidity. So literally you could put $10,000 in a REIT right now and you can start earning interest and you'll start seeing cash flow come into your Scott trade or TD Ameritrade or whatever. When I was at Goldman Sachs, they first the first portfolio they taught us to build out was a REIT portfolio to show us how a stock worked and how it actually paid out dividends. Dividends, yield, et cetera, is easy to give you cash flow. So my first investment would be take a small amount of money and build out a REIT portfolio and you'll start to see cash come through. And when you get paid for stuff, it starts to feel pretty good. Great question here. How much time should we invest in learning a new investment where it doesn't take much of our attention out of the growth of our current business? Okay, this is a really great Layla uh, question. Layla talks about, if y'all, like, am I the only one that watches their videos? Like y'all should watch their videos, right? Their content is awesome. Layla talks about how you spend your time working on the risk that you can control in your business, but your investment, you should understand it, but then it should work for you. So Layla, I, I, I don't think I put words in your mouth, but you, you did a couple of videos very similar to that, right? Do you want to talk about that briefly? Yeah, I think it's just understanding what stops a lot of people from starting to invest, especially if you're a business owner, is that you want to look at the investments like a business. And so conceptually, you're thinking, oh, this is a lot of work and a lot of stuff I need to look at, and you have the need to control. And I think once you let go of that, that need to control and for it to turn out well, because investments are not always going to turn out well, it's not true at all. Um, then I think that you can move forward and with much clearer eyes and say, okay, I am a business owner. And so I need to educate myself enough to understand the investment, but it should not take my time, my energy or my attention, right? And so you have to monitor yourself and say like, how often do I think about my business versus the investments? I've seen a lot of people where they put all their focus on their investments and it's making like, you know, a little bit of money and then their business just dips or like, you know, they kind of just leave it um, kind of fizzling on the side. And so I think it's just being mindful where you put your attention. And I, I think Sharon, like I'm thinking to myself, where does that come from? Fear, right? Like fear of losing money. And so I think if you can confront the fear of losing money and say, you'll be fine if you lose money, you can make more money because of the skill of being a business person, <laughs> then I think you can get over that and you can invest um, and be okay with not having control over it. 
spot, spot on. So good. I also would like to, um, so I have a, I have a course on, on money. It's called the money multiplier. I am happy to like unlock it for all of you, uh, if you'd like, but y'all should promise to go like, don't get it and not go through it. Right. That, that makes no sense. So if you want it, um, you know, Dave will figure out a process for it and I'll, I'm happy to unlock it for all of you. It actually goes through how to set up your safety trampoline and how to write the money rules up front, a few of the building blocks on what you should get right. And uh, I'm happy to go through those now, but I'm, I'm happy to unlock it for you guys. Cool. Yeah. That'd be awesome. yeah. Uh, this is, there was a couple other questions here. Alex's question is wrong. What platform do you prefer to use to buy this stuff? Scott, yeah. Trace, Swab, Robin Hood. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, Alex, you, 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 it's super easy. I, I am a big, I, they're all very similar. So, so I'd say use something that you enjoy the interface and that you would actually use. I have all the platforms because I'm just like, oh, I, I got Robinhood. Let's put some money in here and play with it, right? So it's 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 easy. But I'll tell you what I use. If I'm doing stuff for myself uh, that my that uh, our managed team doesn't manage, I use TD Ameritrade, and I use it for a technical reason because it has something called an option chains platform. Because I do. I learned how to do option trading, so it's really helpful. But I love Robinhood. It is so easy. Like it is so they've made it so easy. And so if you are doing kind of plain vanilla stuff, which is what most of us are doing, Robinhood's super easy. You can run everything from your app. You can even buy some crypto, which is great. So if you want something easy, I'm a big fan of convenience and doing things that are easy. I like nice. It's weird. I know that when you have a nicer interface, you end up looking at it more. It seems really weird, but. The, the elegance of how you uh, interact with something seems to be important to people. It's important to me. So I would use a simple, easy platform. I use TD Ameritrade and Robinhood, uh, but don't overthink this. If you have not been using any platform, I would just start on Robinhood because it's super easy. It's probably one of the number one questions I get for people who are like about to take the first step. Um, and just for everyone, if you want to take a first step that's zero risk, just put money into one of those things. You don't have to buy anything yet, but just the fact that it's there will... Like you don't have to put it in and then do something. It's like, just get it in there. And then you'll have the ability to do it when you, you know, get the courage. Yeah. Uh, think about this. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of, many of you are just, you know, entrepreneurs, marketers, right? If there's a Facebook ad spend, whatever, what, what do we do? It's the same as investments. You test, you invest, and then you scale, right? Just use the test, invest, scale methodology in this as well. You, if you want to buy Apple or a new platform, you put a hundred dollars in the stock, you see how it works, you see it be moving. You're like, cool, I like it, it's working. I see my, and now I'll do more. And then if that's working, do more. But you don't need to go in with a big slug. Like we are, we live in a world where you can test and invest very quickly. You get a lot of mechanical confidence from, from doing stuff. So a lot of people, when people tell me they want to get into crypto, how many of you are in crypto right now? I'm just ultra curious, anyone in crypto? But half the group, yeah. If you're if you're not in crypto, my suggestion would be you should get a Coinbase account and you should buy like hundred dollars of something. Just go through the process of doing that because just doing that with mechan the mechanical confidence will dramatically increase your language. It'll increase your framework. It'll increase everything. So when you get mechanical confidence on stuff, investing becomes investing is a lot of just mechanical confidence. Alex and Leila and I will go. We'll talk about like contractual terms. And the only reason it doesn't scare me is because I've seen so I've seen contractual terms for 15 plus years. I have so much mechanical confidence with these contractual terms that it doesn't scare me anymore. But when someone sees the first lawsuit that they ever get into or the first agreement that they ever get into, it scares them and they lean on counsel a lot. Right. So my offer would be as you're getting into this stuff, I would buy one or buy something small. Just get in, get some mechanical confidence associated with it. Question here was, what is the best REIT to invest in? Lindsay, I don't, um, I built out a little portfolio. What you can do if you don't, if you, if you want to know, just uh, DM me on Instagram and just, and then I'll, I'll, I'll pick the three or four names that I currently have and I'll just tell you what they are. And then you can choose to, you can choose to you know, kind of do research on that if you'd like. Is that cool? Awesome. Question from Kim. Would you would you have 12 months of personal safety trampoline and 12 months of business expenses or the same thing, just worry about the personal? I would, uh, let's take care of your personal take home lifestyle first. Right, Alex, would you agree with that? Yeah. The, uh, the business stuff you'll figure out. Like I want a, if all, if the world goes to hell in the handbasket, what do we do, right? Like I want you to feel good about that. For us, okay. like we, we, and Suzanne would probably know this better than me because she's the one who has been running it for much longer than me. But like you fill up your personal safety trampoline, then you can make a business safety trampoline. The business safety trampoline isn't going to be 12 months of expenses. You know what I mean? The business safety trampoline, I think Suzanne for us is what, 60 days of operating expenses? Yeah. Well, I, I pull it out because we know that we could pull it back. But yeah, I don't, I don't, because we're cash flowing, we're not really having to keep that yeah. in there. 
Yep. Yeah. I tend to prefer to have less cash in the business because I think you, there's the entrepreneurial side of like creating a vacuum and then filling it back up again, but that's as an aside, you know what I mean? Just, yeah, I won't even get into that. Yeah. Um, the other thing also is just, just a suggestion if you don't have this yet, how many of you currently have like a banking relationship where you know the banker and you can go into the office and actually talk to the banker? Like give me a wave. Okay. My offer to you would be, you should have a banker and let me tell you why. I would much rather you go in now over the next few months and start to tell the banker, hey, this is our business. This is what we do. We cash flow this way. Uh, if we were to, I would ask for, if, if we were to get a business line of credit, how would it work? And I would establish that now before you need it. You don't even have to utilize it. Uh, the easiest way to get a business line of credit is to go into a, a, a physical location. You want a banker. I will tell you that. Bank, it is so much easier to talk to somebody for something like this because otherwise you get stuck in the Bank of America phone tree. But if you have a local office, I would go and I would, they will go to bat for you. It is mind blowing how much they would support you. And uh, you can manufacture your uh, business safety trampoline just with a couple of visits to the local bank because they'll just give you a 30 days line of credit. And we should all just have that relationship. They'll say, hey, when you get up to X, we can give you X, Y, cool. And they'll, and you want that. I, how many of you would feel happy if you knew that you had a hundred grand that you could draw from the bank at some point? Like how many of you would feel happy if you did that? I, you, I'm telling you that is well within reach for you. I would just go have that conversation with the banker and say, would you like to see our PL? What would it take to, and just work through the process. I, this, instead of you putting away the safety trampoline uh, for you on the business side, just have the, just manufacture it from the bank. Business lines of credit from the bank are just one of the greatest reasons to live in America. Like we are so small business friendly. So, so take advantage to take advantage of that. If you don't have that, that would be like my favorite takeaway for today, because literally it's going to, it's going to give you peace of mind in how you can run and operate your business. Right. Cool. I just want to say thank you, Sean, like for your time first and foremost. Um, and then number two, like I have a two part question. If you're cool with that. Um, the first one is what do you believe? in today's purchasing power, a million dollars will be worth in 10 years. And then based off that, how does that affect the way that, that somebody that's maybe 30 years old and, you know, based off your age, but like, am I supposed to see investing different based off what the last hundred years got people wealthy? Like, how does that, uh, how does that work? Yeah. Got a great question. So uh, question number one, we, in the last 24 months live in completely different times because of so much liquidity, so much money being inserted in the economy. Uh, we don't have to go into macroeconomics, but literally since there's more money, the value of money is a little less, right? Purchasing power is a little less, which means inflation's coming. That's all that inflation means. Your, your money can buy a little less. Very simple. Whenever inflation is coming, the, you, can, you guys can read and research this, which I would offer that you do. The easiest way to combat inflation is to buy hard assets, which means real estate, commodities, crypto. If you, if you notice, they said, oh, Home Depot lumber prices are up. Why? They're hard assets, right? So people are, they would much rather to do, to do that. Uh, there's an inflation train that is coming that is much bigger than all of us ever thought. So I would say over the next three to five years, um, here's my view on the world, Jacob, on what I love, I'd love to invest in and what I am investing in. Uh, I'm investing in hard assets, which is like real estate, real estate now more than ever. And how can I get the most expensive piece of real estate? like an apartment building or a big commercial building, et cetera. If I can get a piece of that, that would be really good because it's a hard asset. The second is I love crypto right now because it's not pegged to cash and I'd rather be in that. Uh, third is I love, I love any form of technology stock because in this environment where like Google, Facebook, et cetera, I personally like it because they're going to use all this uh, cheaper capital and just flood it into innovation. And that's going to drive significant value in people's companies. And fourth, if you want to do any of that, even if you just invest in the broader stock market, like the XLK or the S&P 500 or whatever, you still win because companies will do significantly better because stocks will do better with, with higher inflation because companies are just worth more because the purchasing power is less. So hard assets, companies, et cetera, soft assets. Like I would not, this is not the time to, you don't need three Bentleys right now. Like one's good. But uh, I would do more hard assets because I think inflation's coming. To answer your, um, what would be a million worth in 10 plus years? I think it's gonna be a significantly less than what it was worth 10 years ago. From 20, whatever, what is this, 2021. So 20, 
2011 to 2020, the growth of a million dollars versus 20. 21 to 2031, I think the 2021 20, to 2031 is going to be a lot less from the purchasing power of the money. So we all should make more and you should invest in hard assets a little bit more. You want to go to the last question? Because I want to be respectful of your time. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Sounds great. Oh, this is good. What do you think about art investments? Uh, Anna, I have no. Welcome to uh, honesty. I have zero idea. I don't have any clue how to do it. If you ask me, I would say, oh, do I have liquidity? Do I have ownership? What kind of terms are these? Is there cap? Like I would ask those questions, but I, this one, I'm sorry, uh, Alex Layla. Do you guys own art? I don't. I don't own any art. I was actually just typing. I mean, if you understand and know art, like we have neighbors in our building who they buy really expensive art as an investment, and we know people who do because they understand it and they've studied it, etc. And then they run it through, you know, similar equations. If you don't, then I feel like there's a lot other other assets that have the same benefits that more people can educate you about than art. But you know, so I think it's a personal question. If you're not buying high end art, super high end art, and you know people and you've been, I, I would probably stay away from it because it's purely speculation. It's like, there's no value in it because like someone else could be like, I just don't think it's worth it. And you'll never find someone else who thinks it's more valuable than you do, which is what's my risk of it going to zero. There's a real risk. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a studio here that their art is like all authentic and they sell it for, you know, 50 grand a piece, 70 grand a piece, hundred, 200 grand. And uh, she just has little kids in Bangladesh making the art. So these guys think they're getting great investments when they're making it for like, you know, however much it's not even done by the artist. So you have to be careful. Yeah. I want to say two, two, well, I'll say, I'll say three really quick things. Thing number one is hopefully that those frameworks are helpful. I'll send Dave and the team all, all the stuff and the links to the course, et cetera. So that'll be number one. Uh, number two, I hope you know that Dave, Alex, Layla don't need to do this. They don't need to spin their networks, lean on their relationships to find people, find great people to come and hang out with you to share this. They don't need to do this, right? There are hundreds of companies that 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 I know owners of and leaders of that don't do this. And I think that we all owe um, both a silent and public debt of gratitude to um, Alex and Layla for always just thinking about us, helping us get better, putting out great content, making sure they think of the team, et cetera. So um, can we just do like a, just can you just unmute yourself and do like a whoa, 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 whoa wolf pack for for alex and layla just as a thank you just a quick whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> awesome awesome um last but not least uh if if you want if you have a question or a thought just just hit me just dm me on instagram and be like hey i have this and if you can keep it as a quick yes or no question or something short uh i'll probably get to it faster than others but but since we were all here together please feel free to do that happy to support you guys in any way that i can Thank awesome. you so much, Sharon, for uh, for taking time. Hopefully, you guys, those are the those are the frameworks that Leila and I uh, learned from Sharon, and we apply those to you know all the things that we think through. And trying to keep it simple is is always the goal. Anyone who makes it feel like it's overly complicated, I'll just run the other way. And so uh, it's usually was it like any any fool can make something complex, but a master makes it simple. And so I think Sharon is a is a wonderful example of that. And, and we've learned a tremendous amount, and we're very grateful. So can we get a can we get some ones in the chat real quick for Sharon for like I, he does not need to do this um and he did it for you guys because uh he just wants to help awesome super cool lots of ones awesome thank you guys thank you sean you're awesome. phenomenal appreciate thank you guys you guys have a good rest of your thursday awesome thank you guys have a good one talk soon